Hi everyone, my name is Adamo Young and I'm from the University of Toronto. Today I will be presenting our work on MassFormer, a tandem mass spectrum prediction model for small molecules. This work is presented as a poster at ISMB 2023 and is also available online as a preprint on archive. Mass spectrometry is a common analytical technique for identifying and quantifying compounds in a sample. Tandem mass spectrometry is a specific type of MS that involves a fragmentation step where the ions are broken down before being measured. In the life sciences, tandem MS plays a key role in proteomics and metabolomics research, with a number of important applications ranging from drug discovery to biomarker identification. Typical, typical tandem mass spectrometry workflows consists of a few core steps that are illustrated here. First, compounds in the sample are ionized, allowing them to be manipulated with electromagnetic fields. The ions are moved around uh, the instrument and sent to a mass analyzer, which records their mass to charge ratio, or M over Z. These unfragmented ions are called precursors. By focusing on a narrow mass to charge range, it is possible to select specific precursor ions with a particular mass and send them for fragmentation. The fragmentation process, often involving energetic collisions with gas particles, results in the molecule fragmenting apart through the breaking of bonds. This creates a distribution over molecule fragments, known as the fragmentation spectrum, that reflects the compound structure. The spectrum acts as a sort of fingerprint, providing an additional layer of structural information that can be used to differentiate between molecules with similar masses. A major application of mass spectrometry in life sciences is compound identification. In metabolomics and natural products research, MS is the primary tool for identifying small molecules. The most common way to identify compounds with mass spectrometry is to compare the unknown query spectrum against a library of real experimentally acquired reference spectra. If the query is highly similar to one of the reference spectra, it is possible to recover the identity of the associated structure. However, this approach fails if the appropriate reference spectrum is missing from the dataset. Unfortunately, this is quite common as current uh, publicly available libraries only cover tens of thousands of compounds, but we are interested in analyzing a space that is orders of magnitude larger. One potential strategy to overcome this limitation is to artificially augment the reference library with a large number of in silico spectra using a spectrum prediction model. We can leverage existing uh, chemical databases such as the Human Metabolome Database or PubChem or even generative models to increase our library coverage by orders of magnitude. This greatly increases the chance of finding a correct match. The key contribution of our work is a new model for spectrum prediction. Our model, which we call MassFormer, uses a graph transformer architecture to transform the input molecule structure into a fragmentation spectrum. The input to the model is a molecular graph, represented as a set of node and edge features, which capture information about the atom properties and the molecular graph topology, respectively. These features are passed to a relatively standard transformer architecture, which iteratively applies multi-head self-attention and multi-layer perceptrons to process the data. After many iterations, the chemical information is pooled into a molecule embedding. This molecule embedding is combined with spectral metadata, such as the collision energy, and passed to a multi-layer perceptron, which produces a sparse positive vector that represents the bin spectrum. The model is optimized to predict spectra with high cosine similarity to ground truth data. On average, MassFormer's predictions are accurate for held out compounds and outperform existing approaches for spectrum prediction. We compared our model to competitive fragmentation modeling, or CFM, which is a commonly used probabilistic model for spectrum prediction, and two uh, deep learning methods. The fingerprint model, or FP, which uses a chemical fingerprint representation of the input structure, and the WLN model, which uses a graph neural network representation of the compound. We ran experiments using held out data from two different spectrum data sets. NIST-20, which is the same library we use for training, and MassBank of North America, or MONA, a free online repository of mass spec data. Across all data sets and splitting strategies, we found that MassFormer was statistically superior to the other models. We also evaluated our model on two spectrum identification tasks, the CASME 2016 competition, which is a common benchmark for spectrum identification, and a new task we introduced called pseudo-CASME or PCASME. The goal of these tasks is to simulate uh, spectrum identification workflows in untargeted mass spectrometry experiments. For each task, the models are provided with a small set of query spectra, and for each query are asked to rank a list of candidate structures. Each model is scored using three different metrics, the average rank of the correct candidate, and the frequency with which the correct candidate is ranked in the top one and top five structures. 
Massformer is able to outperform the competing models when it comes to rank and top five metrics, but is outperforming itself by the fingerprint model when it comes to top one. We were also interested in investigating model interpretability. Specifically, we wanted to understand how the model associates structural information with, e with each peak. We use a technique called gradient times input or GI attribution, which measures the model's sensitivity to changes in different parts of the input. For each predicted peak in a spectrum, a corresponding GI map can be constructed by computing the gradient of the peak's predicted intensity with respect to each of each atom in the input molecule. <coughs> We reasoned that peaks which correspond to similar fragments might depend on the input structure in similar ways, suggesting that their GI maps would also be similar. Consider the example spectrum for the compound propranolol on the left. We have annotated each peak with a green or purple label, indicating the presence or absence of nitrogen in the mass formula associated with that peak. We also con co computed GI maps for each of these peaks. Uh, the attribution scores for the green nitrogen peaks clearly exhibit patterns that are distinct from those associated with the purple non-nitrogen peaks. Projecting the GI maps for each of these peaks in two dimensions on the left, we noticed that the peaks were clearly linearly separable. More generally, across the entire data set, we showed that the linear, linear separability of GI maps based on nitrogen presence was statistically significantly higher than random, as indicated by the figure on the right. This suggests that GI maps provide information about which fragments the model thinks are associated with each peak. We also found that this pattern holds with other atom, heteroatoms. So thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out or come visit our poster. <laughs>